three, two, one. All right. Well, what up, everybody? Uh, welcome to the first experimental podcast that we're trying out here um, to talk about our new record, The Grove Sundial. I'm Jason, and I'm here with the rest of the Warforged crew that live in Illinois. We're broadcasting out of the uh, solar plexium yeah. in Naperville, Illinois. The observatory. Uh, on this beautiful, uh, what are we, in August? Yeah. It's Sunday. It's two weeks it's before nice the album comes Sunday out. Sunday afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, our record comes out in a few weeks, but you probably, I don't know when you're seeing this. It's probably the air date the is different. Yeah. yeah we'll, we'll figure it out. And uh, yeah, after. we're, we just, I thought uh, we all kind of had the idea of, we had a lot to uh, a lot that went into the songwriting process for all these songs, and we all like it when we get to hear our favorite artists talk about uh, the origins and history and everything that kind of went behind making these. So we're talking about and thinking of just kind of going through all the songs on the record and sort of talking about uh, them and expressing them and, uh, I don't know, just talking about how we feel about them all and how they kind of came to be and everything behind them. So... Yeah, we're just giving this a shot. So, uh, you know, how about we go down the line and introduce our? Well, we, I mean, every we'll introduce ourselves, yeah, but you guys quick, pretty quick, much fucking yeah, know. If you're watch watch this. this introduction right here. Yeah. Alex, bass, vocals. Wow, damn, you're such a pro. <laughs> man. Hey, why don't damn, we start it off? Dude. Hey, well, how, why don't you tell us about how you got into that? I didn't even have to cup the mic, dude. <laughs> um, I'm I could Jason. Have the I play drums. I'm yeah. oh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, Max guitar. <laughs> Jace guitar. There we go. That's yeah. what I like to see, man. Yeah. Alex does vocals. Our vocalist Tim Straight lives in Seattle. Yeah. But we're planning on uh, yeah, kind of plugging him in here when we yeah. can and live figuring via it out. Satellite, probably. Yeah, we'll yeah, satellite we'll feed him in live, live via satellite, satellite here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah link. We got the satellite on top. Yeah. Of the we, observatory. We are, that's why we actually have a dude in this room. Yep. Yeah, because mm -hmm. this is the best link to space. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dude. It is linked to space. I call Bruce Willis from this shit all the time. Like, yo, you blowing up that asteroid yet, man? You, know you blowing saying? up that shit, <laughs> Armageddon. <laughs> yeah, cool. Right. <laughs> All right, man. I got it. Anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah. let's talk about the uh, let's talk about the record. Now. Yeah, well, uh, yeah. I think the cool part about this record, well, I think the big part about this record that differentiates from Voice is the idea that um, it's not a concept record in the sense that all the songs don't necessarily necessarily connect with one another lyrically or musically, thematically. Yeah, <laughs> so every song can kind of be digested on its own. Um, which I think will make this a little bit more of an interesting podcast because there's so much in some songs. I, I don't know. For me, I feel like I could just go on days about them. But I mean, every song has has such to me at least a different vibe to it that uh, there's a lot to a lot of substance to kind of dig into there as right. opposed to kind of bringing together one story. So I think it's good to kind of talk about that before we dive in, just in the sense where it's like everybody gets an understanding of like. How we kind of approached it, you know? Right. And, uh, yeah. You know what? Let me switch out your microphone. I feel like that one's a little. Mine? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it sounds, I think it sounds sick, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> does it sound good? It does sound a little better, actually. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Hell yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, so. um, but yeah, the not concept album thing. I think that's an interesting story because that's that was kind of what Voice was known for, and for this album to not do that, I think was kind of I don't know. It made sense for us, but it's interesting. Well, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah. It was. I mean, I think a lot of people were expecting us to continue going on that that route. Um, but like you said, it it didn't really make sense given the the circumstance and everything. Um, and I think we all we all were like a lot happier doing that too. And I mean, it meant that we could do more of like what we wanted to do. I don't know. It just it came a lot easier, and it just felt right. So, yeah, it's it's weird, man. It's like I think about it because I I mean, in a sense, I don't think we even thought for a period of time that we wouldn't be making a concept record uh, with kind of the plan we had in place with voice at the time. And obviously, Adrian's heavy hand in the band before. Um, I think that once uh, Adrian had left, um, kind of having sort of more of a blank canvas, at least for the four of us, to kind of go off of, I feel like 
if you're go- I mean with with a rec- with a record like voice like 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 how strong of a concept record it is musically thematically lyrically however you want to look at it it obviously the four of us know how much time really goes into something like that and um you know you got a record that took five years to write and uh coming into doing the creation process again with without the person that was mainly behind something like that i feel like it's really hard to feel any type of motivation to want to continue it at least that's where i was at um Mm -hmm. mentally thinking about it you know because it's kind of like totally i feel like when adrian first left my initial thought was like well what the what now you know it's just i mean it wasn't last last person we thought would leave the band exactly yeah it was just kind of like where you know the direction is kind that was sort of in play for you know granted that it was just the whole everything was fucking weird i mean and we lost you know a lot of time due to a global Mm -hmm. pandemic that yeah I don't think anybody saw coming and uh, it just put everything into like a re it like reframed everything for me, at least I feel where uh, I don't know. I found that once it came time again to kind of sit down and think about like, what is the next move artistically or whatever? I thought it was, I, I don't know. I think it's cooler to kind of not set those borders in place that were kind of there to do the concept before, because I think it just yeah created cool. something more natural to us to well, at least it's well, interesting to bring up yeah the, the whole thing about uh the concept because the first song no land man <laughs> uh was written like basically the week adrian quit I, I fucking sat down i was inspired i was like he's not gonna be in the band well then i guess i'll just like write a whole bunch of shit because like i don't i'm ex- i was excited dude. i was like fuck yeah like i can write all this shit and like would you say I don't mean to cut a lot you off, of my shit? Yeah, but would you say that you felt a lot more of excitement with that then, like uh, just overall? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. When Adrian quit, he was kind of like, "Well, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to write any more stuff at this point." And I was kind of like, "Well, that leaves me some room to have some fun." Yeah, man. <laughs> it's and so- we got back, and I, I I got back. I didn't. I don't think I. It took me a few days, I think, to write. But it was like within the first week of Adrian quitting, I wrote No Land Man. And at that point, what we were talking about, we didn't know if we were going to continue this concept uh, from the first record because we felt like, you know, at least partly, I felt like that it was like possibly a cop out to not continue. Like we set this shit up. It's called one voice. It's like, <laughs> oh yeah, with the, the I voice. Yes, yeah, I yeah. voice. I voice one. And it, it felt like it, it might have been a cop out to not continue it. So when I was writing it, I was like, it was based on the presumption that like maybe we would continue it. It fits well not doing it. Like the intro of No Land Man, if you listen to it, it has this thing. It was supposed to originally sound like a buoy like bells like you know when you get out like to mm. too far and there's like the bells on those things mm-hmm. like hey you're out too right far. Yeah, 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 yeah 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 and it kind of um, has that that synth that tone yeah it does there. but like that was originally what it was supposed to be because at the end of voice the mm. guy and there's waves the guy yeah the, the narr the narrator or whoever the the person is that's whatever you would call that like the main character yeah um protagonist yeah the, yeah, protagonist. the protagonist there we go mm-hmm. yeah he uh the protagonist. <laughs> he, le- he leaves this like <laughs> island that he was trapped on and he there's waves at the end of it because he's floating out to sea so it was kind of like the idea was like well if we want to continue the concept like you could have like the beginning of that song be like buoy bells thing like ringing and then the guy's right. like floating out too far and then it just starts this like turbulent fucking thing. And originally the the drum beat there, which you changed, it was a it was an Adrian idea actually. The drum beat that I had originally written, it was like this: uh, you're blasting on the the floor tom and the and the snare, and you're doing the double bass with it. So it sounds like uh, really intense and like you're I know that grinding huh. teeth. Yeah, it was like his uh, idea for for one of the songs that we never wrote, but he never like did it like I don't, he didn't go through with it or whatever like he never wrote it but it was an idea that me and him had discussed and he like told me he was like yeah i think that'd be cool like to simulate like grinding teeth and i was like well that could also just simulate like any sort of intensity or turbulence or anything so i had done that that's not what ended up happening jason did something else that actually sounds yeah, way better. I did, it's, it's funny because fucking i didn't know that was your up. intention behind that part when you initially okay. sent it until now yeah that's oh, cool because okay. <laughs> the part that's yeah, in there is much more groovy and much more like well, it's more intense it's more it's, of a pump more up like, uh, and like yeah, more, yeah it's more exactly tough it's, it's and, a better like tension yeah. builder because right away like the old one is like tense from the start and it's like 
it was kind of a weird snare pattern with it too that was like accent to listen weird. to that again yeah it's well been... I'm, I'll, I'll put I'll put in a clip of uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah we're talking about playing play yeah. the clip right Inter- now yeah. interspersing exactly. clips here yeah um, that's yeah. a good idea so I was gonna because I have all those like demos and shit I would say it's so mad. God damn. Yeah. That's so fun. Obviously. So No Land Man, the first track on the record. And also another another Um, Easter egg, too, with No Land Man is my bass part when the whole build up before the vocals start is from the song Voice and Willow at the end of Willow. It's that same bass part because I didn't know if we were going to continue the concept. So I was like, fuck it. Like, right. Let's Mm -hmm. throw that Easter egg in there. Even without the concept, it's still a cool nod to like the last album. You know, it's, it's war fortune. It's it's still cool to have that in there. (laughs) In the first minute of a song to immediately be like, yep, that was the last record. It's it's so funny. Another place. Oh my God. This is, this rules. I love this. This is so sick that we get to finally like talk about these songs like this in the setting. But like, it is like curiosity mode. I feel like now when we all listen to this record or something that we've all said amongst ourselves is that No Land Man is kind of one of those songs that it has more of that classic Warforged vibe to it. Yeah, 100%. Where where it really retains that voice sound. And yeah, probably because you did write it in that. I I remember when you had an... (laughs) I remember when you initially sent No Land Man. That first demo was like a week after Adrian left, right? Yeah, Yeah, the the whole reaction, because I remember that so vividly. And I don't don't remember the reaction vividly. I remember my feelings. I remember me just feeling like... I was not in the mind space yeah. to even understand what the fuck we would do next, yeah. where I was just uh, it was 100% no fanfare for well, it. Well, that yeah, was, was not, I'm not excited <laughs> about where, it. Where yeah. were we? Like, so was I there when you showed up? We were it? in Jason's apartment, and okay. it was a week after so Adrian quit because we got together to like talk about what are we going to do next. Yeah. And at that point, Alex had written two songs. Yeah. I had some of the beginning of Him and Broken Teeth done. Yeah, and I remember playing that, and Alex played the MIDI of his <laughs> oh, of yeah, No okay. Land Man, and I think the first half of Burning Days. Yes, mm. and, and then there was another song that we didn't use, but yeah, I should. Yeah, yeah that's right. Mm. I forgot yeah. about that. Yeah, um, three songs. but yeah, Alex played it, and it was just kind of like <laughs> the mood was so different between Alex and Jason, where Jason's just like <laughs> my friend that I've known for yeah. how long is no longer in this band, shit, and yeah. Alex is like I've been yeah. wanting to write songs in this band for eight years so here's a song i wrote you know so it's like jason's just still like what the hell are we gonna do and alex is like i have songs yeah. <laughs> you know? and it was yeah. just like right right it was just crazy i remember hearing that like and alex i think it sends me before that too and i, I it was a weird song because i remember like i remember being really intense but like the outro was a little like more melodic that we would have normally not yeah. done yeah and i was like 100%. i don't know this is gonna fly and it turned out great but i remember that reaction where i think People were just kind of like, ah, I don't know if I'm really feeling listening to a new song a week after the guy oh, wrote yeah. all the songs it left. sucked. You know, and it was just kind of that, like. That's exactly. <laughs> yeah, like you but, couldn't have described that more yeah, perfect. Yeah, but it was, <laughs> it was just interesting because Alex was just chomping at the bit. And yeah, and I'm sorry, I man. I didn't mean to seem like I was unenthusiastic I mean, or disappointed you at the time. I, I, was, I was just biding my I time. Song, yeah. I, but yeah, yeah, I love that song now. I know. Yeah, it's like your I favorite. Oh, yeah. I think at that time I just wasn't ready for it. But yeah, yeah it's like one of my favorite songs I mean, it's on the like record now. Fucking my tr- <laughs> my trademark. Dude, fucking yeah, Alex, like 100 miles an hour. Shit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, yeah, same really dumb is. shit you'll get a fucking year and a half later. Oh, you're a genius. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but like part of that too was <laughs> really smart. Yeah, fuck you. Yeah. So fucking smart. Was a but what I did too is I did the demo for the first like two riffs of him and Broken Teeth. Oh yeah. yeah. And I recorded it, and yeah. Alex played the MIDI, and I think that was that a was huge a big, part of it. There was a big difference because when Max sent that over, mm. I remember thinking like, oh, okay, here's something, here's some gas yes. in the fucking. Oh, was ass. the No Land Man demo MIDI? It was just MIDI. The first yeah. one, yeah. Right, the first yeah, one yeah. I showed you. That, that's the yeah. one she took a while to get demoed because 
you guys will remember we were doing the old tuning that we were we had planned on. Oh, it was a, it was an yeah. alternate tuning Ugh. that was a uh, right. It was a uh, we play seven strings on the record on Sundial. We play seven strings for most of the songs in just drop G, so everything's a whole step down, and then D standard with the low G. Guitar but, nerd alert! Yeah. Guitar nerd alert! Guitar nerd alert! <laughs> guitar nerd alert. <laughs> Nobody's gonna talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. There's a couple, that shit. Yeah. There's a couple but, um, six string songs too. Yeah, just yeah, drop there's two, yeah, there's two songs that are in just Which in drop C. Used for six and that was yeah, that was kind of what we were because voice was all in drop C. Yeah, and uh, we had initially like thought like kind of oh know, yeah, we wanted we to make do... like a backwards compatible uh, seven string tuning. So it was basically drop C, <laughs> but then with, with the low, low G. G for the seventh string. Yeah, that is such a wacky tuning. It was so weird to like and then you play and tremolo shit it's like it's harder for you to like you know switch guitars so that's oh, yeah. kind of why we thought we're like oh let's just do sure like, sure yeah yeah, yeah. 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 I, mean, I would have, <laughs> I would have loved that for that to yeah. work but sure. man it's just like th- playing anything on the lower strings just felt so strange because it's just like a yeah the gcgc dude yeah no F-A-D. very weird yeah, it's like a drop tuning with the low then the low two strings are standard it's really I don't yeah, know, I mean it's like it's like bass it. tuning basically. So, but like if you're playing yes. chords, trying to play chords with that, like it's confusing it's sometimes. Very confusing. Especially I started just, to get used yeah. to it, but I never liked it. So yeah, same. I hated it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we we I, that song was written with that original tuning, so that's why it took so like because we still really hadn't discussed because like that was kind of like Adrian's idea was to be like, well, let's just do this so that we don't have to you know like let's just do GCGC FAD instead of GD. Right. And um. Yeah, none of us. I mean, you got. I, I was okay with it, but you guys were kind of weird well, about it. Your bass it. was already in that tuning. Yeah, and it's anyway, kind of it's, our it's idea to, too, though. Like, I he, mean, he just told us like, weird. just tell me a tuning you you want to use. The record and that like yeah, we kind of right. decided that. So yeah, it's kind oh, of okay. 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 Was, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I didn't, I didn't know that. Yeah. We decided that knowing we weren't going to be, you know, we contributed some riff ideas to Adrian's right. stuff right. before he left, but we never like wrote a song. So yeah, when I when it's like, hey, I might actually write a song now. I kind of want to have a tuning I know. But and this, I'm comfortable with but it. But that's the thing, like, despite yeah. being, like, one of the first songs written for the record, it wasn't, like, demoed for, like, five months because I didn't want to retab it. Like, it's like, it, yeah. but it was, like, it was, like, it was always, like, kind of there. And then we, like, kept writing, like, ideas kept coming up. And it was kind of like, well, we still have Nolan, man. Like, that's the song. Like, mm. that was, like, st- always kind of on the back burner when it hadn't been demoed because I was, like, we had, right after that, it was, like, two weeks later, we were, like, let's just do regular drop G with the D instead of the C. Oh, so did you, so then you originally wrote it with shit. the old tuning? Yeah, with the oh. C. Yeah, that, that, that was the first that song. That and Burning Days and then another song we didn't use was mm-hmm. like... Mm-hmm. Well, like you had said, that. with the idea... I mean, even with the title, No Land Man, I think you wrote intentionally with the idea yes. of it being adaptable to come out of voice. You know what I mean? Or like right. to connect to voice. Yeah, that's like... That was a t- yeah, it's I a title like, where it's like, yeah. Yeah, like, everything uh, was there to just kind of like... Was, if we did decide that we wanted to do like the sequel... Because we had always... T- I mean, even with what was... An, uh, even with what was initially planned with the second record when we were talking about it when Adrian was still in the band the idea was to continue the protagonist's journey right. so I yeah, think having was... that song have that name kind of just made it be like hey we could do whatever with it but there was no I mean you didn't send it with any lyrics or any vocals no, at all but that did kind of like fuck with us with how we were supposed to write the lyrics you big time I mean that, that was yeah, the entire cause, uh, yeah because we, we had like you know it's like a, it was a cool name and we wanted to keep it so we had to kind of write lyrics around the name it was weird. yeah I mean that was that was a We'll get in, we'll get into that. Okay. We'll get into the lyrics towards the end because that was like the last piece of this song. I feel like, oh and for I, sure, yeah, 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 but yeah, yeah. I I remember once hearing the demo and and learning the song and throwing the blasts over it. Where when like when I did the pre pro drums was when I felt like it really started to come to yeah, life for me. Yeah, they sounded way better. But um, in the mix, like looking at the way the Grove came out. And looking at it in a bigger scope, obviously, as a collection of songs like it is, you know, I it does really it really does have no land man stick out to me for because at first I was thinking of that, too. I was like, you know, is it is it sick to include a song that could be adapted into another purpose on your record? You know what I mean? Yeah, it's interesting. Was, it's like, does it sell still right. the same meaning then? You exactly, because I remember still being under that impression of, uh, you know, like, how, how am I going to make, you know, it's just like, how does it feel genuine? You know, like, but I love how that song, I feel like now the final product of No Land Man is like one of the most genuine Warforged songs that exists. Yeah, yeah. Because really of everything sure. it kind of went through. And I, I think it's like. It's like a perfect it, opener too for right. the album. Yeah. And it's just so, yeah. it's so sick how like through all the different like things that it i mean lyrically at least that it went through and all the you know everything that took for that song that came to life i just i love the piece of like what it is what that song is to me now it's just like 
mind blowing how it got to where it is. Like the it's like okay, we have the singer from Disentomb on it. Yeah. We have yeah. you doing like a Metallica solo on Hell it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just like what, what, to me like adding all of those flavors to what that song initially was. It's just like yeah, it's such a fucking I think it's such an important piece of of this record specifically but just to the Grove in general like I feel like it's so uh it's such a fucking sick yeah, ass beater, like, dude. It, it, it represents yeah, yeah, yeah. like all the different kind of. It, it 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 pays tribute to like old Warforged, but it's still like mm-hmm. it's like, hey, this is gonna kick your ass a bit differently. Right. It's gonna groove a bit more. Um, and it's just and it's gonna have a little more melody in there, which I think is kind of like the Grove. Yeah, rise, absolutely. You know? That's yeah. the and thing. It's yeah. like it opens that. It kicks down that second half of that song. Just kicks down that door. Yeah. You yeah. Know? But at right. the same time, still respecting the door before it right you know which i exactly. think that's why it's such a sick song <laughs> it kicks and it the works, door down yeah. but then it picks it up and yeah and it, puts right. it, back. it's it's like, it with respect puts it but, back on yeah. the hinges but yeah you with know respect because well, it's cool it's like a fucking weird like seven dust chord progression at the end with yeah, like brutal percent. death metal vocals over it like you know what i mean yeah. it's like yeah, no, yeah. it's it nuts is, yeah. to just think about yeah. it and and yeah god damn that song is so fucking i like for a while it was like that was like the only heavy song I would listen to after we got like the final mixes back because I was just like, this is so aggressive. This is so angry. And, like <laughs> the song, like itself, like I I remember, you know, I guess if we're getting well, like when I first heard the song, I, I and all the drums that you had initially put there, mm-hmm. it was like I would never like I was looking at some of it and I was like, okay, this is some shit I would either never play or like it wouldn't come to me naturally. So I remember. You know, listening to this song, and obviously it's got the Warforged tricks at the beginning where it's got kind of the weird interspersed little, like, time changes and, like, weird accents and whatnot. Yes. But kind of changing. I I remember the initial drum groove was that, like, dun-da, da-da-dun-da, like, kind of like the snare on, like, da-da-dun, da-da-dun-da, with a ride thing. It didn't have blasting in the demo, no. Yeah, and then I just, like... Until the second... I fucked that. myself over by adding all the blasting <laughs> of the song, but it's like yeah. it wouldn't. It wouldn't. It was, it's sick though. That yeah. was yeah. probably the song that changed like almost the most. I'd say drum with wise that. with demos. Yeah, mm-hmm. Definitely, sure did yeah. too a lot, but like that one. But I sure. feel like it sets that perfect like Warforged vibe with those blasts, right, where it's right. just got that like mid tempo like drive <laughs> to it, and uh, yeah, yeah it's, it just kind of keeps it like that pace going. That like. Yo ho, yo ho, yeah, very pirate. Yeah. Yeah. It's got, the, it's got that pirate melody <laughs> part. <laughs> that was actually on accident with like the whole he was supposed to be lost at sea. <laughs> but it was kind of like right. right. yeah, when you when you oh, hear no it, you're like, no, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, because oh, so like, intentionally supposed to be like a pirate. No, it wasn't. It wasn't intentional at first, but then I realized I was like, oh, if this does continue, if this does continue, then it's 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 very pirate shippy. Yeah, and that's the thing. It's like yo ho, yo ho. <laughs> I will say well, and the melody yeah, too in the the I, yeah. it wouldn't really be called a chorus but the one part with that melody yeah and that's where that that swing really picks up with the drums because that's where I do that beat that's the only part I break up the blasts under that like yeah yeah um it's like double bass and but I think that lead is like one of my favorite parts in the whole album I love that that's a fun lead oh really. Yeah, was, uh, yeah, you like you like that I since love day one. That lead, That's yeah. sick, man. Because the way it like builds up to that point, it's just like boom, and it just hits you with that lead. You're just like, oh, like I just imagine like as a listener listening to that, yeah. like that it's would good, get me so good stoked. Good melodic. I can't like. Yes. I yeah. wish yeah. I could listen to this song again for the first time, but like this, I can't imagine like what you would think hearing that and then going straight into a verse with fucking Jordan on it. Yeah, and uh, God, like God damn, That's so sick. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like. It's I love I, yeah I hope everybody doesn't think we're just blowing smoke under our asses under these songs. We yeah, just I mean, really, we're we really excited, like them. Yeah. yeah, we just really yeah, like them. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, fucking, <laughs> that's why we fucking do it. So yeah. listen to. <laughs> I mean, it is. You write songs you want to hear, so yeah. like right. I actually found myself listening to these like fucking oh, yeah. finished record a whole Shame. shitload. Yeah, I love yeah, it. You know, and, it's uh, like fucking. Uh, and this, yeah, this song is definitely. I listen to it the most because it's the first song. So you start the record. Yeah, and that's how it goes. You might get to like track four or five, and you're like, oh, I gotta do something else, and then right. start yeah. it over again. But it's like No Land. I've probably listened to the most. Like this song for sure. <laughs> um, an interesting thing I kind of I wanted to bring up, which I think will lead into the lyrics for the song, is sort of how. I really feel like with the band now and with the Grove, uh, one thing that started to really happen, at least with the songwriting process that created a big difference, was sort of like this unintentional repurpose thing, repurposing of like classic elements you might have heard in a Warforged song before, like 
keys, like keyboards, I feel like the biggest example are like, now you hear them in such a, it's like the keys are still there, but they're there in a different way that we hadn't really Definitely. used them before. There's a lot more different types of synth exploration on these songs, I feel like. Uh, but it's like, like you hear the beginning of No Land Man and it's really got this kind of like, groove to it as m more of using it as like a melodic type synth you know or like a lead over something where it kind of sets that like ambiance at the beginning and you get that like oh, pulse yeah. um yeah uh, oh, a lot there, was of a, there was a lot yeah, of yeah you know what i mean record, like a lot like. of synth like, percussion it, which is yeah. cool it adds a heaviness to it which though. is something we've never fucked with before <clears throat> no, and true, i think true. it's it's cool like obviously we don't have a synth player in the band as of now so kind of yeah finding a way to repurpose those elements i think was like awesome and it's just cool how it's like oh yeah this is warforged but they're like you know growing up in a way you know it's like they're finding other ways to like repurpose some of this shit and like i i don't know i, I think oh, it's really a kind of intentional thing with writing the record was that like, exactly what's it was like uh you know we, we knew we wouldn't have a keyboard player whoever we would get to do vocals like right it'd be such a fucking plus if they could play keyboards we wouldn't even consider that so it was yeah, kind of like exactly yeah. intentionally written where it's like the, the keyboards take a, a little bit of a little bit, but yeah you know it's like it, they're fun to add to shit like because they, they, they sound still good. there yeah, yeah and we they, love them yeah. but they, uh, they add an extra fucking texture of like heaviness a lot of times where it's like and that's the thing i feel like they really shit. they served a big textural like purpose right. is that a word textural? i think that's like a textural. huge part of warforge too just the warforge sound textural. in general so like i mean yeah i definitely. feel like sound design yeah the mellotron <laughs> stuff and shit you know? yeah yeah exactly yeah. and I, I i can't remember if we did discuss like not using any synth or anything i don't think so i yeah. think it's just kind of like the way it yeah. happened yeah like well, ironically, we would, when before Adrian left, he had discussed not using synth. That's true. That. I know. I was just thinking about <laughs> that. Yeah, yeah. For the shit he was writing. Which right, is, yeah, yeah. That's right. interesting. So, that should yeah. be known that if uh, if you're not a fan of this album, you wouldn't have gotten yeah, synth probably, on the new one. Yeah. yeah. If Adrian had stayed in the band, so it wouldn't have been, yeah. <laughs> It just, it yeah. brings, it puts, when whenever, like, okay, you look at a band like us, where it went from sort of like the power being in more of one person to then being dispersed to everybody as far as like how things went creatively, like. I just kind of it's like you're you're just like rediscover it's like it just opens this whole doorway of all these possibilities yeah. Yeah. instead of find, following sort of more of a linear path and uh yeah uh, it's just fucking like I I you know when you think of like a song like No Land Man musically it was super fucking powerful by the time we had I I had felt like it started to gain that power by the time we were near the end of the demo process of it and once we had those like blasts over the drums but like when you have a first song on a record that's not a concept, you got to make that motherfucker like scream. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like yeah, it's got to jump on at you to a certain degree. And Alex and I like that. That was another common theme was sort of like Warforged is known to be this kind of scary band lyrically, you know, atmospherically in the past. And I wanted to retain that scary vibe, but I wanted to t I wanted to take it and apply it in a different way, sort of like the keys. You know what I mean? It's like. And scariness doesn't always have to be a ghost. Scary shit doesn't have to be a ghost story. It doesn't have to be like, you know, something that's more of has more of a mythical element to it. It could be like a dude in your fucking house waiting to beat the shit out of you. Yeah. It could be yeah. like yeah. something really scary that you see happen in a, in the day to day life. And uh, it's interesting how like once I sort of made that connection that it that was sort of the key that made no land man i feel like lyrically what it was because before alex and i were just kind of like where do we t like it's the opening song it's a very like it's a journey it's an adventurous song musically it goes a ton of different places but it's also like <clears throat> it's such a strong like mark on that record yeah where i feel like yeah. you really need like a central like something central to it that that's going to sort of you know, blow the lid off of it and make somebody look at it and be like, wow, something's going on in this song and I want to listen to it and figure out what the fuck that is. Lyrically, as much yeah. as as, yeah. as much as you want it musically because I feel like lyrics sometimes in metal, especially in the type of metal that we play, it's not a, you know... Uh, a shit talk thing but it's sort of like sometimes it could it could they could really sit in a back seat way for sure yeah and i think that was definitely a focal point for right. the lyrics of this album is like they have to say something they have to be thought out a good amount right you exactly know? and i think yeah some bands do do that where 
you know, the lyrics aren't as like, oh, it's just like we got their lyrics on here, you know? And Exactly. And I think that was something too, like, I know Alex. Alex is, piss count one. <laughs> <laughs> I think Alex would say we this. Put a, we should put a counter. Yeah, we should. Video. We should, yeah. Um, one piss count. But Alex would definitely say this too, is like, I think at one point, we, him and I had talked like, how are we going to get vocals on these songs? Like, he was like, I, he's like, I'm writing, like, the songs are definitely more structured in that way to have a verse and chorus than voice was, but it's like, are the vocals going to work on top of these guitar parts? Cause there, there's right. a lot going on. And, um, you know, I think that was definitely like, Oh shit, let's make sure these aren't in the backseat. You know, I think there was definitely like, there's numerous things that came up where it's like, Hey, we need to make sure they're not like these lyrics need to be well thought out, you know? Right. Especially so. when we had the intentions of getting a guy like Tim to, to, to join the band and like be our vocalist. And you have to write music without, having a vocalist and not being a vocalist you know what i mean it's yeah like, yeah i feel uh, like there's a certain challenge to it where it's like all right there this definitely has to be sick you know yeah like and, uh, in this case like yeah it's like we, we wrote all this without tim and it's like hey please join our band like i hope you yeah. like this music we wrote for you you know <laughs> yeah um and, and yeah i think that was definitely part of it like being conscious of that you know exactly and uh i'm jesus christ like i remember alex had sent me ideas for no land man and then I would try it like I tried fucking with them and I wasn't feeling it. And it was just sort of like the lyrics we had were sort of like this un underwhelming vibe. And like with a song that powerful, it's like and to me, it has more of this darker classic Warforged element with kind of like a violence to it. And I'm like, OK, like how can we like accent how can I like accentuate those fucking feelings? And. I had kind of this idea of writing a song that was just filled with metaphors of, like, really fucking bad shit. Just really bad, t bad, real, like, terrible shit. Like, licking, I don't know, have you got, like, did you guys, you guys ever lick a battery when you were a kid? Like a positive end of a bad. Uh, my dad. I don't think I ever did, but what, uh, it just shocks your tongue. Or like a nine yeah, volt or I something. Yeah, I have. Uh, I took a one time. I was like plugging a guitar pedal, and I had like the power cord for it, and like two other things in my hand. I was like, oh, I'll put the power cord in my mouth while I grabbed my hands and I like <laughs> shocked my mouth. So it was nine volts. Yeah, it's <laughs> terrible. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> See, I tried it with like a triple A because my dad's like, if you lick it, you'll feel it on your goddamn. Uh. My dad doesn't. Oh, that's how you know. That's your dad's voice. That's how you know it's still good. Yeah. yeah. But he was just like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> basically, my dad like taught me. He's like, yo, if you lick this and you feel it, it's still got juice in it. I'm like, all right, cool. Damn, dad, you're so smart. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> you know, when I when it came to, um, I'm pulling up the lyrics now just so I have them for uh, reference. When it, when it came to, like, No Land Man coming together, it was sort of like we didn't really know where to take it. And Alex had sent this kind of, like, narrative more type song to me that I tried fucking with uh, that was written in the first-person perspective. Um, and it just – it was sort of like, I don't know, No Land Man, the name of it, you know, it's got kind of a nautical name to it. And I'm like, how can we – how can we put this – frame this in a contextual way where it's not as, like, fantasy. It's not as, like, ah, the No Land Man is a yeah. colorful a ho, 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 man ho, with a cape ho. that lives on a – yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? It's a like – A pirate's life for me. Less <laughs> mythical, more like, oh, how can I be like – and I, I've kept thinking of No Land Man, and it's like, okay, it's a guy, a, a man that, like, there's no land for the man and when i think of that in more of a realistic context it's like okay i think of of, of a person that may feel like they don't belong anywhere you know based on whatever mm. the fuck that happens so to be yeah. and i had all of these fucking like these ideas of like taking a power drill to like and drilling yourself in the hand or like you know putting crazy glue on your tongue just like really fucked up weird gross shit yeah, that's sick just like fringe guy yeah you know what yeah. i mean just like weird shit that it's like what the fuck like and and come just coming up with all these violent ass like ideas and it sort of started to connect itself and then i remember uh i had done the pre pro drums with you for the song because yeah. it was a trickier one for me rhythmically and alex you were kind of at that point where we had gone back and forth like two or three times on the vocals and still couldn't find anything yeah, that i yeah, think yeah, either of us were really like jazzed about and then finally one night i got fucking ripped at like two in the morning and was gonna go to bed it ripped as in i got very high i hit my <laughs> coffee cup bong and uh, was about Oopsie. to go to bed, and then all of a sudden, like, sometimes for me, I, I like, when it comes to writing lyrics, at least on this record, it starts with, like, certain lines that I would come up with, and I could get some really cool lines, like, when I'm tired before I go to bed, 
Um, that is sick. Yeah, you yeah, get some strange. Yeah. And I yeah. started Half getting a, a couple of really sick lines this particular evening, and then my girlfriend was asleep, so I was just like, fuck it. I got out of bed, I got in my kitchen, and I started playing the No Land Man uh, demo on my laptop while I took out my phone and started recording cadences and like different lines that would work. And kind of this like theme when it just it just fucking happened. It was like, bam! All of a sudden, I had most of No Land Man, and it was just kind of this story about this dude that feels like he doesn't fit in anywhere, and he's just on this insane fucking self destruction path. And it's sort of like the idea of violence bringing him peace. And uh, then that's when I was just like. I got it. And I met, and you were probably sleeping, but I messaged you and I was like, Dude, yeah. oh my fucking God, I got it. Yeah, like, it was just this fucking thing. You sent me all those like, demos too of your Yeah, your it cases. was like, yeah, exactly. I, I recorded everything on my phone without <laughs> a click. Uh, and I was, yeah, I was like tapping my phone on my marble kitchen or my hand on the marble <laughs> kitchen counter to like keep time. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it just all came together, and it's it, it was just sort of crazy how it was like it became this very visual song to me where it was like, you know, I was trying to take all of these, like, inspirations of, like, uh, there's definitely some falling down in there, some Michael Douglas mm. and falling Hell down yeah. about mm. uh, that, you know, it's like there's a movie about a guy that wants to, you know, that just snaps, you know, and it's sort of like his reaction to sort of not taking anybody's shit anymore. And it's, it's and, uh, don't try this at home. Yeah, kids. don't try it at home, everybody. It's violent. It's it's not yeah, you know, yeah. We're not advocating for it, but it's just sort of I like am. <laughs> it's sort of like when yeah. you just see somebody at the end of their shit, and it's like I I remember thinking of like at some point I had the idea of tying in that theme with like the idea of uh, I can't remember the dude's name. This guy, I'm looking it up now, but the guy in the movie, the David Lynch movie, Lost Highway. Uh, who plays the guy in all the fucking makeup that goes up to the main character. Robert Blake. Yeah, Robert Blake. There yeah, we go. Yeah. Robert Blake, who's a scary motherfucker in general for going on trial because he probably killed his wife, but yeah. didn't kill his wife. I don't he know how that turned wife, out, but, he got but it a, sounded bad. He got acquitted, I think. But uh, yeah, he's just a scary dude as it is. But in this movie, Lost Highway by David Lynch, he's got all this crazy ass fucking scary makeup on and he goes up to Bill pull him in and he makes him like pick up this phone call on this old dad's cell phone and it's it's robert pullman on the phone telling or robert blake on the phone <laughs> telling him like yo i'm inside your house and i'm like damn that's fucking freaky like what if some dude came up to you handed you a phone and it was him himself on the phone like jace i'm in your fucking house dude it's like what the f how yeah, what well, i'm looking that. at you motherfucker <laughs> how are you in my house so you're like, immediately gonna start thinking dun, da, 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 i love that song yeah. dude yeah. 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 are you talking about no land man yeah. Yeah. If, you hear that I love that band. if you hear that riff tell people what you heard that shit but um <laughs> it's just like that thought is so fucking scary to me it's just like what the fuck yeah. like how and so like taking that and, and i just had that idea of being inside somebody's house of like you know waiting to fucking beat the shit out of them or do something fucked up because it's like why else would that dude be in his house probably to freak him out and that yeah, would not freak there me for out. like beat him up kill him yeah cookies. exactly he's there to hurt him man it's just like it's just violent dishes. shit breaking yeah. and entering i came to help out what can yeah. i do yeah can i back you clean um, your vision being scorned dude and it's sort of like the way the song's written you know it, it goes from like this very like aggressive feel to more of a melodic thing and uh the song lyrically was written along to the music so it follows the passages which is something you had mentioned that you liked in songs so yeah. i remember to try i was trying to kind of keep that in rain here um I remember having discussions about that, like when you came yeah. by, because we did all the prepo drums here on electric kit, and you'd come by in the evening during the week, and we'd work on that. I remember, like, yep. you working on vocals, it was like, hey, like, you're having hard times, like, well, you know, yeah. have it like flow with that, and I think that kind of changed with this song for you guys with the way you wrote lyrics. I think for this album, time, or so yeah. you know that yeah. this was kind of like a, oh shit, this is cool, like this is a good way to do it, right? You know, and it's just because that song has so many like. You know, the whole first part is about the dude just being pissed off and it's all these different metaphors for his anger and all the crazy shit he does. And then there's the part, you know, where that big melodic open section kind of comes in and Tim is doing those like DSBM highs and shrieks and shit. Yeah. And that part, I mean, lyrically, it's just about the dude like how it's sort of like he's like there's no fitting in and uh it's sort of just like a lost cause to him but then the song concludes in sort of this like happier more melodic motif and i'm like 
what's the way you can match that vi- like violence with a melodic motif where it's still going to be somewhat of like a cuz it's it's hard to go from a completely ugly vibe to like a pretty vibe lyrically as much as it could be musically but it works so well in this song that it's like you have to match that you know what i mean it's like you have to match that or else what is it? It, it i just feel like it wouldn't be what it was so coming up with the idea of like you know cars are a big theme on the record driving is a big theme of the grove and uh the idea of the the main character the no land man being in this car and kind of like getting into this accident where he like hits a wall and just goes through the fucking windshield you know it's like driving an it's pretty much instant death if you're like you know when you watch those car test videos yeah, yeah. of like a dummy like going in yeah. going out the window just immediately yeah. smashing imagine taking that and just watching it in slow motion and that's the exact vibe of the end of the song it's supposed to be like you're watching this guy kill himself by basically running into a wall as fast as he possibly can driving and it's sort of like his la- the, the lyrics are supposed to be reflective of his last moments being alive kind of going through this windshield and sort of like reflecting on all the events that happened to this song and how he finds peace through all- letting all of this aggression out so it's basically a song where you shouldn't follow along to anything this guy is doing it's or you of- <laughs> should follow along to everything he's doing <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah it's just sort of fucked up it's it's just sort of like it's about it's a song where I, I hope that people can listen to it and it kind of like relays that message of it's like yeah you know what I can let my aggression out by listening to something like this because here's a story about a guy just going on a fucking insane rampage yeah. and killing mm-hmm. himself but finding peace and bliss throughout through that ending and it's like it creates such a I don't know such an interesting vibe I think to kick the record off with because it is really one of those songs that it is it's kind of conceptual in the sense that it does tell a story um, and it's got you know a protagonist but it's all contained within that song Mm -hmm. you know and I think that that was a really cool new thing we were really able to discover with songwriting this time around was like okay here's a concept but it just sticks to the song and it's you know you rein it in with that and uh it was just really cool to be able to kind of like it was that first song where i was like fuck lyrically this feels so fucking complete like on my end where i was just like from then on out it was sort of like if we you know like i don't know how i would be able to write lyrics another way or at least it's my favorite way of writing lyrics because you'll see once we talk about the other songs like alex and i had definitely different tons of different ways that we came up with certain songs so right right. um but yeah man i just fucking love this yeah despite conceptually uh conception uh was early but finishing it was like the late one of the latest it was one of the last songs lyrically yeah yeah well i mean just in general just like getting it all kind of finalized it was like one of the last yeah it was the last one even though it was one of the first songs to fucking really be conceived Right. Yeah. <laughs> Which is interesting. So I, I remember yeah, too. Yeah. When well, we I mean, were... it's the same thing with kind of the next song, but yeah, still. But yeah, when we when you had COVID and the three of us got together here, and we went to that wing place. I remember we were going through all the songs, like figure out what needed to be like if we needed like add anything to it or what what how we felt about it. What fucking wing place? Buffalo wings. Yeah, wings? like it yeah. was like yeah, the Super stinks. Bowl. It wasn't the Super Bowl. It was like the first day of. No, it was August or September. It was September, but it was like the yeah, it wasn't the Super Bowl. Yeah. It was like the first day of like football or some shit. So a bunch Yo. of people were watching the football game there. And anyway, but we were listening to this song, and uh, I remember like I was like, oh yeah, don't forget about No Land Man. You guys were like what? And we were playing it. You guys are like, yeah, that's pretty sick. But it's like it had been forgotten about that whole summer. That song, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, was, it was like we didn't really I think about it till like the end of September after having it for like six months, like done. It just wasn't yeah. demoed out yet. So that that goes mm. back to the point of like the demoing was so yeah, crucial it was very to this album. Crucial, yeah. And the, yeah. the fact that this song was written in an alternate tuning, and I was like, oh, I had to yeah. like <laughs> go back and just like it wasn't even like that hard, but it just stinks to like go retab some shit for you guys, like. Just like by making the C into a D, and you're like, ugh. And they're like, it did change like a lot of the chord shapes it and did, stuff. Yeah. Where I had to change yeah. like mm. some of the shit because it was in like a, it's in an awkward place where it was kind of like some of the stuff was like on the open C string. 
So then it's like, oh, you got to change it to the five. Oh, well, yeah, that groove, the dun gun 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 It's yeah, so much different a little bit. playing yeah, yeah, yeah. it on the way it is now versus, like, it is How actually it was in easier Drop C. the yeah. other way. Yeah, yeah it's <laughs> fucking weird. Yeah, yeah it's, That's uh, funny, man. It changed a lot of the shit in the song. Like, it changed, like, a lot of the chord voicings and stuff because you had to do it different because you're not in Drop C with the low G. You're in Drop G with... D standard you know, with, with the G. Exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah, you're yeah. in drop G, so you like if you want to do something in C, you gotta go up to the fifth fret instead of the open string. Mm. It changed a lot, yeah. So it was kinda like me being lazy, like oh fuck, I gotta change like a few parts of that song. Like I don't know how I'm gonna do it. I mean it does it. suck though, yeah. Yeah, it's annoying yeah. as fuck. Yeah. Um and then yeah, I finally got to, yeah, but it was like very much so like uh I didn't weird. know this shit for the record. Yeah. I yeah. didn't know any of this, so it's very interesting yeah. to like <laughs> hear about it because I don't I don't know. Obviously well, we, we I don't know how to about, play like, guitar, so we talked about that like not saying certain things like when we were talking about doing this podcast like Let's keep these things to ourselves and discover yeah, yeah, them yeah, definitely. like this. Yeah. You know? So it'll be cool. cool to see what yeah. else comes up. You it know? is cool. <laughs> um, yeah, but I didn't yeah. know that. That's that's crazy. But yeah, yeah then yeah, I mean, going yeah. to like you doing the drums, the pre-pro drums, like not understanding the song until you did the drums to some degree too. Like right. then it's like it's just all kind of like it's just yeah, it's just crazy how early the song was written and then like it all clicked at the end. Exactly. You know, it's just it's just the process is just interesting with that. I remember exactly. um one of the when I first heard like the actual demo part, um one of the things that stuck out to me like a lot was that pick scrape that you do in the beginning yeah. on the yeah, demo because it just sounded <laughs> so gnarly and just like, what the fuck yeah. is that? <laughs> that's coil, also like, uh, yeah, that's like the, the, the gnarliest pick scrape, like that I've ever heard. And like, I was like, how did you do that? <laughs> yeah. <we're good. laughs> but, yeah, like, I honestly don't know. I just fucking, but it's yeah. cool. Cause then like it's looking sick. at that now, like, and then with the theme of the song about no land man and he's like driving a car it's like that's kind of what it sounds like it sounds like tires like squealing yes right well, yeah you, you kind of try well, to like, yeah, that's what's that so sick yeah yeah too, so right? then like i mean i recognize that i mean and when we recorded the actual guitars for it like i we tried to get it as close as possible to how it sounded on the demo for that first pick scrape mm -hmm. and i think it sounds like sick as fuck but yeah uh then in the solo later on and so that's happening during the part where he's like slow motion like crashing right yep so yeah then during the solo i mean this is at the very end of the solo um i like was like okay i gotta do another like pick scrape just to like that's when it transitions from that um melodic part back into the uh just that the dun, the intro dun, riff dun, 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 but slowed down yeah um and so yeah i did another one of those just gnarly pick scrapes and i was like that's supposed to be like you know the car like veering out of control or whatever like as he's like crashing and and mm -hmm. going through the windshield and shit um and then and then at the very end of the song and this this was like one yeah, of this, this was a very idea. late idea oh yeah this that is that came this is hard um, as fuck <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then i i can't remember why like this why i thought of this sound but... design king jace kibbers <laughs> <laughs> um i think because I, I i like heard um like someone's someone's car like the the dinging sound that yeah that you hear when you leave your door open and your and, keys, bing, and bing, your keys bing, are bing. in and i was just like oh shit like what if we like threw like some, something like that in the end after the the music stops and it's just like silent and you just hear like this is like the crash the fucked up scene. car remains yeah, yeah like that hap that happens like right after he crashes dude i love um, that man yeah. that made that adding that like oh man that's this song is so fucking sick dude, dude. <laughs> on so many yeah. different levels this song fucking rules the steam is like an air fire sound. oh yeah yeah so yeah. then we're like okay so <laughs> the, the steam sound is like a no it's um uh, air a fryer? pressure cooker a pressure oh, yeah pressure. the pressure cooker when you release yeah, the when pressure you release yeah. the steam, that's, <laughs> the, that's that. the car steam and then jace yeah you had the yeah well the, so we got the the car dings you know i just found some i don't know just got the it off YouTube. engine knocking oh, dude. sorry <laughs> probably gonna get copyright infringement for that or something yeah. but oh, well. yeah the, then the engine knocking sound or whatever i was like oh i remember like in grand theft auto <laughs> 4 yeah um that because that game had a crazy le a, a amount of detail and like that was one of the things where it's like after you drove a car for a while and you got out you just listened to it you would hear that yeah you would That's hear awesome. like the radiator uh yeah. Sizzling clicking and, clicking, and yeah. yeah and i was like fuck we should get like that in there too yep. like perfect like the engine is steaming and you hear the radiator clicking and the car is beeping and it's just like otherwise just no, nothing no yeah, music dude. or anything and it's you're just listening to that right at the very end and it's like fuck yeah 
Yeah, cold open, man. Fucking, it's just so yeah. sick how, like... It's so good. It concludes the saga of the No Land Band by it's just like, oh, mm-hmm. that's what you hear. And, and, yeah. you, and then another... If you listen to that in your car, you fucking think there's something wrong with your car. I hope so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, shit, I didn't even think about that. Like, Dude, like yeah. <laughs> why is my car dinging? Yeah, yeah, it's like we police sirens. Kids but, listening oh, to... Uh, oh, that should be illegal, man. Police sirens and music, like, yeah, freaks man. me out But we fucking with you on a whole... Uh, it's the sound of the police! When we were, uh, when we were kids <laughs> on a 502 by Megadeth. Remember oh, that? Yeah, and then we yeah. all be like, oh. yeah. yeah, that was that was like the first time I ever listened to. Like, there's a car alarm, or there's a police siren. Like, what's going on? There's a sign yeah, the the so, so, This is the cops. One, uh, one more quick little Easter egg about that ending part. Um, so, uh, so the first song, No Land Man, it ends at a slower tempo than it than it started. I can't remember what it is exactly. Like one eighty-five to one twenty-five or something. Yeah, like one twenty or yeah. something. It ends at, and then um, uh, the next song, Him of Broken Teeth. Is that it's at a faster tempo? I think I can't remember. It doesn't matter. But I think one maybe yeah one fifty, but something like that. But yeah. So then when the song cuts and the the beeping from the car starts, um, we we made sure the beeps were gonna be at the tempo that him of broken teeth is at. So then it transitions it yeah, it's a click into track the next song. It. Yeah, it's basically yeah. like a like a click track going yeah. into the next song. It's yeah, like it's half like, half notes on on triplets, right? It's dun, like ding dun, ding. ding. Something like that. Oh, cool! That's awesome. I didn't know that either. Yeah. Yeah. See, (laughs) (sighs) because I never supposed to be keeping time. I haven't listened to this shit back to the only way I'm. And this is so funny because you guys probably all have a better way. The only way I listen to this record is by going onto our Dropbox account and going into the sequenced masters folder and listening to the (laughs) individual tracks. I got saved on my phone. That's how I do it. Yeah. So I've I haven't even like listened to it front to back without like the stops yet. So. Oh, oh, interesting. Really? I know, yeah. Oh, I know, not right? even when we were, like, sequencing it and, like... I don't know that shit, dude. <laughs> I mean, I've, <laughs> yeah, I've you got to ask me that. You did a great, that yeah, you did a great job. Yeah, whoever, <laughs> whoever took care of that, it sounds awesome. So. I mean, yeah, I listened yeah. to it that yeah. way a bunch of times. I didn't, oh, but yeah. I want to. And I'm going to. Maybe when I get the CD. Yeah, I'm gonna, I haven't you know, listened to it in I mean, a while. I'm going to wait. You know, none of the songs uh, really were meant to flow into each other like at, like they did exactly. in voice or something. Yeah. But, you know, there's still like there's a, a good that's kinda flow why I didn't. to them. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, like fucking one flows into two, four flows into five, eight flows into nine. Mm. Yeah. In ways that, yeah. you know, I don't know. Like a lot of records do that that aren't concepts. It's just like yeah, Kill Switch yeah. does it's that just shit nice. sometimes and they don't. It's just nice to yeah, yeah, it doesn't just it's like, like song, a song, second song, song, song goes into the next, you know, breathe yeah. life into fucking end a heartache. It's like that extra yeah. thing. Yeah, you know. yeah. Breathe life. That, that's probably the biggest inspiration for this record was that song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, it yeah. was. Uh, Sheridan Road. <laughs> driving you so long. <laughs> <laughs> dude, <I can't laughs> words, yeah, dude. Every chord is the root fifth like that. Like, yeah, dude. Sharing the road. Also, I did. I do want to say too, having uh, talking more about the process with Jordan on the song, it was really cool. He was fucking awesome to work with. Disentomb is one of my favorite heavy bands, and I knew that I wanted like like heavy, heavy, you know, like the brutal death metal world. And I knew that I always wanted to have a guy like that on a Warforged track because it brings such a different vocal element that we haven't had before. And I feel like he's got such this weird, angry tone with his voice, and just having him like on the song. Like once it all came together and I heard him on there, it was just like, yeah, this is so fucking sick. And he was just so like, he was super cool. I gave him like uh, lyrics. Nice. Jay's giving us a time. Uh, I gave him the lyrics. He wasn't like shitty about it at all. He said he dug the song and hopefully that reigns true. And he wasn't just saying that to be nice. But uh, either way, it was cool for him to say. Um, And it was cool. It was just, it was interesting because we like... We had so many guest vocalists before, and we really stripped that down on this record. Obviously, we only have three, and uh, on voice, uh, we we didn't have a guest on the first track on "We've Been Here Before." So, kind of like introducing the song, like having the first song on the record also have a guest vocalist. I think is a little bit of a maybe it's a just in my head, but I think it's a little bit more of a risk when we're also presenting a new vocalist. Yeah. But it's also just kind of like I don't know, man. That song is so angry. That, it's just like, like why not? Yeah, you know? exactly. yeah, this is the sick idea. Let's just do it. Who yeah, cares? I should, yeah, that's, I I don't, your, that's your the mentality of the whole album. I done, <laughs> yeah. I done heard that boy. And I said, "This boy sounds like a toilet." 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Actually, yeah, it does. sounds like a sewer drain. <laughs> <laughs> that sounded so good. Oh, good. That, that sounded sick. Good. Good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now it sounds bad. Right, everyone, everyone do that at the once. <laughs> oh my god. We're leaving that in. How's it sound, guys? It yeah, we're leaving great. that in. Yeah, no sure edits. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to increase the volume there. So yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Redline it. I said, this boy sounds like a lump of shit. Look at the, look at the thing yeah, on there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. That's sick. Throw a, show a screenshot um, of that. Yeah, Jordan was this. fucking sick on that song. I think yeah. it sounds so sick on there. Yeah, it's it does, it does and, sound really cool. Yeah, it adds to the toughness and just kind of, I think, mm-hmm. brings that home even more that, like, this album's going to kick your ass more than scare you sometimes. Exactly. You know? And it's like, that was really, uh, at least for me, that was one of those conscious choices where it's like, that guest vocalist really provides that flavor, you know, that you're not going to get with, that we, can, I don't know, I don't know if anybody in our band knows how to go like that. Dude. barbecue devil that flavor. barbecue devil voice oh, that man has devil. um but it's just cool to like sometimes think of the like guest vocalists in a way of like man who would just sound cool over this vibe yeah. like who would sound cool over this and it was it's so cool to have like fucking like <laughs> underneath a fucking ripping metallic apart fuck yeah yeah we gotta talk about that solo because i think yeah. that's <laughs> probably my favorite solo you did it's so oh, sick. Yeah. 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 Like one solo, of my favorite dude. parts yeah. of the record yeah it's an awesome yeah. solo sick sick that's yeah, awesome yeah it might be my um, one of my favorite solos too yeah. or my favorite i don't know i think that was the first mm, no i think i wrote the one for for bliss joined to the bane first but mm-hmm. yeah. um uh yeah i don't know like when i was just like listening to that riff and trying out some ideas like i was just like you know what this is just like asking for just like some like straight pentatonic just bluesy shreddy you know mindless kind of shit like that and like classic rock kind of style solo and i was just like fuck yeah i'm just gonna go for it and like you know let's just do it up like fucking kirk hammett basically and um, you know, as I was like putting it together and like coming up with the different parts and, and, and writing it, I was just like, man, this is asking for a wah. I don't know if that's too much <laughs> or not. And I just tried it out and I was like, oh, it sounds so good. Yeah, oh. it's good. <laughs> so yeah. that stayed, that's in there. Yeah. It's got, it's got wah. It's not too much. It's not, it's not quite Kirk Hammett level, but. Um, it's there and you can hear it and you yeah. know, <laughs> it's sick, dude. I love um, it, man. I, I was like really so tempted cool. to use wah on the uh, hymn of I think it was the hymn of broken teeth solo yeah, probably also you were but doing I was it like, after and you're still thinking about it yeah I was like Man, this, this one could use wah too <laughs> fuck it just put wah on all of them. Yeah, uh, yeah I didn't do that though that is like, so sick though like what, tasteful about it like wah dude no one uses wah like that like yeah. in this scene, yeah. I think it's so cool, man. I love What's that. Your fucking Anthony Kiedis, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Anthony Kiedis' yeah, fucking uh, guitar player. death metal band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he has a death metal band with uh, Dave Davidson and fucking Carl Sanders. Ding dong, ring ding dong. Carl Sanders is like, yo, this boy's spitting. This guy's fucking sick, dude. This boy's spitting. Yeah. I don't know. I mean. Do you guys have any last words on this? All around the soul? world. Um, we can go to him in a second. Oh, man, I got let me piss look. Piss again because I didn't let it all out the first time. <laughs> I was trying to get back. T- you're already <laughs> up to. Yeah. So does that does that mean that it has to go to a point five piss now or like some? No, some it's still because I got up to leave. I still have to. I have to round up if I get up. Okay, so, we're rounding yeah. up on piss. If, if you pee here in a bottle, it doesn't count because you didn't leave. Actually, I'd say that counts as a half. <laughs> I like the acoustic part. We have to change it now. In, uh, or like that acoustic little break thing. Oh, and no, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, oh, that's right. Yeah. I was going to mention the break, that, too. I guess, but the vocal part with yeah. the acoustics. That part, I feel like it's just so, like, it just screams Warforged. Like, that is such a Warforged part. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Totally. Um, yeah, it's sick. It sounds like an evil red and we did every time I hear it. We did the acoustic guitars. It was classical and steel string, right? Yeah. For that part? Yeah. yeah like I was, on the, yeah. I was on the nylon and you were on the steel string. Yeah. It sounds cool. Um, yeah, that's a that's sounds a very part. bayou that way. Like, yeah. I'm down on a bayou. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's sick, man. It almost yeah. has a banjo tone with both of them combined when I hear it. It does, yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's like very like someone's like spitting chewing tobacco and like yeah. you better go you better go home boy yeah it's very much that like <laughs> it's not that good around here <laughs> that is an interesting bad things mix. gonna happen to you that's an interesting thing to do like mix nylon and steel string like i i don't know if a lot of people do that <laughs> and yeah i don't know what the i don't know i never i never would even think to do that honestly but alex wrote it <laughs> and then yeah. we cool. recorded it it sounds and it sounds it, awesome and it does sound cool i think there's some other parts on the album that are like that that are 
nylon and steel string at the same time. Um, yeah, I mean, it adds an interesting sound for sure. Yeah, yeah sound texture. Yeah, t- timbre. Texture. Timber. But yeah, I fucking love this song, man. And I think uh, <clears throat> another thing worth mentioning is that we intentionally did not want to have this song as a single because we knew of how much of a fucking, like, power fucking house this one was. So I think saving it as the first track on the record and it kind of being a surprise to the listener in a certain degree is sort of like the intention that we want to have behind it. Mm-hmm. You know, just sort of be like, okay, you are getting this fucking classic War Forge 6 sound, but it's like, maybe you didn't expect it with the singles that we gave to you, but like, you bought the fucking record, you popped that son of a bitch in, it's like, we gonna set the record straight that it's still gonna kick your booty, just in a couple different ways. Yeah, you know? it's kind of a different way of, of, of how War Forge can fuck with the listener now. Is yeah. like, you, you know, because <laughs> like voice is like, oh, it takes you on the journey, but like, this is like, well... Maybe you didn't like the singles, but you like the album more, so you should just buy it and yeah. listen to it on Spotify, whatever you got to do, you know? I think that's cool. Yeah, exactly. But, and it's I think, like, yeah, not having the first song as the first single is a cool move because it's like, that's what every band does. And I think that was something where it's just like, let's try, like, just putting an out, like, a, not the first song as it's a just, single. It's hard you know? to, like, it's hard to not do that because I always feel like every intention of the first song on any record is to set the tone. Mm. Uh, except with us. So, like, not doing that this time around I thought was really cool. Because, yeah. like, it it doesn't. It sets the tone in a certain way, but it also doesn't set the tone because well, there's, like, songs that sound nothing like it. In my and opinion. to, like, film a music video for this would have a, would require a budget that we can't afford. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> it's, if it was going to go, yeah. like, in a way where, yeah. You we're know, just going to crash Alex's car into a wall and oh, he'll be the no yeah, man flying yeah. through the window. Would you, <laughs> would you go as, like, a gabbam cracker? Where'd you get it? <laughs> from, from my house. Man. Oh, yeah. You brought it? No, it's from my childhood house, which we're in right now. Oh, <laughs> fun. Ooh. I don't know if we um, disclosed that yet. Oh, Garum Cracker. <laughs> Would you like a Garum Cracker? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it that sucks me at the same time. Who's pronouncing it like that? Dude, I, I, a Hugh Garum Grant does, Cracker? Dude. Yeah, Hugh Grant But that's does. not even how it's Barney spelled. Greenway says it like that, dude. <laughs> Would you like a Garum Cracker? <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Graham Cracker. Graham. A garum. That would be if it was like G A H. That would be like if it was uh, like a garum masala yeah. cracker. Yeah. That'd be fucking good. Damn, Jay spitting. Yeah, dude, he is spitting, dude. <laughs> 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 well, yeah, I think that's all I have to say about the track. Yeah. Jesus. How long did that go? How long are we at now? About an hour. An hour. Damn. All right. Well, fuck yeah. Cool. Yeah. That's not much. so bad. Yeah. Jumping to him. And that was a lot. I feel like there was a lot to say about that song. So. You know what? I kind of got to pee. Well, let's Me sign too. off, and then we'll uh, we're gonna start pee. it again. Oh, yeah. Be back. Good call. So. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll take a break, and then we'll see you in the next episode of whatever this is going to be called. Yeah. So we don't have that yet, but we'll figure it out. Uh, National Geographic with Warforged. I think the camera's off. Thanks for listening. Oh, yeah, shit. Yeah, it might be. Fuck. Bye. Fuck.